<clears throat> Hello. Uh, here I would like to get started for this one, chapter five, data visualization. So far, we talk about the data processing, and basically we talk about uh, a few stage, starting from file, and then we read data in, and go into uh, basically go into uh, tokenization. Okay, and then we do uh, pattern recognition, uh, regular expression, and then we uh, go into a view of the uh, objects and data model. Okay, data model. And now we start to look into how starting from starting from this data model, we go into uh, data processing and data visualization. Okay, so here are the different stages that we work on. So last time we introduced the classes. Okay, we introduced the classes. And here we would like to look at continue the classes and the Python uh, data model. Okay, and we will introduce the MapRalite, NumPy, and the PyLab. Okay, so basically here we start the data visualization. And I'm going to new a new file. Okay, so here we still continue to do the object. Okay, the data object. So last time we talked about the classes and objects. We will continue some discussion on that, and then briefly uh, on that portion, and we will move on to the uh, processing and visualization portion. Okay, so let's look at the. Data uh, model. Let's look into the data model. So let me bring up the objects. Uh, last time we discussed some objects. Let me see here. Uh, I cannot see my mouse. Let me see. Mm, let me see here. Okay, let me actually open a new file. So I'll bring up the class uh, information and data. So last time we walk into the classes. Okay, uh, we go into the classes and object, and we actually uh, finish here. We actually go into the classes. We had a class variable, instance variable. We finish that. We finish uh, basic simple inheritance. And we talk, talk about the uh, the constructor mutator, and these different uh, class attributes. The class attribute we haven't uh, discussed yet, but these are more advanced topics. So this week, let's actually look at uh, how data can be read into the model. So first, let's look at uh, the JSON uh, file. Okay, let's look at the JSON file. So first thing, that look at the JSON and why JSON is important. So JSON versus the Python object. In Python language, we are using dictionary, and in JavaScript, we are using uh, JSON format. Uh, that's a JavaScript uh, object notation. Okay. So basically, today we are going to talk about this uh, matching between the JSON and uh, the Python uh, dictionary. Okay. So here, first, let's look at some data file we can create it from a JSON file. So let's actually go to a JSON creator.
So here also soon now we have a simple JSON object like this, shape, a radius, shape, width, height. So it would be an array of two objects. So they will be actually here we have uh, copy to here. Okay, we have array of two objects. Okay, and let's save this file to uh, actually a uh, disk. So let's actually save uh, the document file. Let's call this one. Uh, let me see. Call this one uh, geo object. Okay, geometric object. Okay. Uh, let me see. And save. So it will be saved to our local uh, disk. Okay, save over here. So I have a file called geo object uh, the JSON, and then I'm going to actually uh, load it. Okay, so I have a file and open, and this file name is called. Uh, this one's called uh, geo uh, object the JSON. And then this file will be open for reading. Okay, so we have this one uh, and open it and let's do uh, read it to a string. So this one uh, let's do at that read. So we will read the whole thing into a string, and then that is a JSON string. So here we have a string, and that string is a JSON string. And after, let's look at this one, and then my uh, F will be closed after that, okay? And before we uh, proceed any further, let's do print out this uh, JSON string. So as you can see, it will be a JSON string like this. It is a string of these, it's not a data structure, so it's only a string of such a format. Okay, so it, you, you actually download that one and do it. So here we would like to have a dictionary a D equals uh, JSON download. So we would load a, a data to us here. Okay, so we are going to load this thing to a dictionary. So let's look at a JSON node. Okay, so here we can do JSON uh, load function. So JSON load is an encoder and decoder format. Okay, so what we would do is that we do JSON and we can dump the data out and then here we can import. Let me see. Uh, here we have we have the loading and that is a string format and you load it to a data uh, format. So let's do this one. Here let's do this one as uh, uh, X, okay, as an X, and let's do loading of this uh, string onto the X. And here, let's print now uh, this uh, X, okay. So here, be before I would like to print it in the pretty format, so let's do pp print, okay. So let's do pp print dot p print, okay. So pretty print for that X format, so let's run it. Uh, actually, string has no attribute of read. Let me see. Mm, JSON load. Uh, return loads. Let me, let me check it. Okay. Here it use load. It's a string. Oh, I need to use load s, not load. Okay, it's not from file. So here should be load s. Load S and load are different. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. So here is actually loading a string into it. So it become an array of two, uh, two dictionary. So let's do this one. Here actually let's do four uh, array. So it actually is uh, element. So that's element uh, in the array X, okay? And each one of them let's do for each uh, key in the e, e is a dictionary, so let's do this one. Uh, print H E of key. 
okay, and the key, and E of key. So this one is actually is brought in the dictionary and print out the key and the, the uh, and in the array format, okay, this format. So that's two is one. So apparently you print now the first one you have a radius and three. These are uh, two key and pa uh, data value, value, key and value, key and value uh, pair. Okay, so you have a key and value, key and value printed. Okay, and then shape and vertical has also a key and value width and three height and two. So apparently you can see that it's not in the order. So actually these things are done in parallel. But we actually can print now the uh, JSON format uh, actually uh, pretty uh, well. And the JSON can be loaded and then being uh, explore the data structure uh, in the Java, Java format. Uh, I'm sorry, Python format. Okay, so here I demonstrate uh, how to download a JSON file and then put it into a string and then load that string into a uh, data structure. So this data structure can be a uh, dictionary, can be array. Hi, Julia, how are you? I'm good. Okay, and then we will explore the data uh, in this array and then for each array entry, we. Uh, actually, we all have a dictionary, and each dictionary we will print out the key and its related uh, value. So this one is our uh, reading from the JSON object into a uh, Python uh, data format. So again, here let's look at it. You will have a JSON editor. You can edit any Java uh, any uh, uh, JavaScript uh, object, and then uh, you can download it as your object uh, representation. So this one is pretty much similar to what you can have in uh, JavaScript. So one thing we need to know is uh, this one, you have a bracket data of the data. So each one of these, it is a list in Python. And actually this one is also a array, array format in uh, JavaScript, okay? So basically right here, we have two elements in the JavaScript uh, array. And then each of the element is a dictionary. So you have the data field, key and value, key and value pair, key and value pair, okay? So dictionary is the same as Dictionary is, it will be the same as uh, the dictionary in Python. It will be a, a key string or value uh, versus a value. Okay, a value can be a string, can be a, uh, can be a string, can be a data uh, or number, okay? So each key associated with some value, okay? So that's the format we have here. Okay, so here is the short introduction of open the file in JSON object and then uh, put it into uh, key a value key a value format. Okay, so now this one is the number one data model. We have a JSON file. We read it from uh, read it from a uh, a JSON object. Okay, so now let's assume that uh, we will actually try to build this object, this scene into an object. Okay. So, okay, so here we actually have a uh, simple, simple uh, data, but we do need to have two class for this one. Okay, so let's look at the, the JSON file again. So JSON file, we have a shape circle and we have a radius and we have a shape uh, rectangle and then we send height, okay? So these are typical a circle class and a uh, and a uh, rectangle class. So let's actually bring up the two object class over here. So here that's actually new a, a class. Let's call this class as a circle. Okay, 
So this class, circle class, we can define a class called circle, okay? And here you should have a defined underline, underline, init, underline, underline, okay? So this one is a constructor. So you should have a self that, uh, here because it's a class, right? So actually, right here, let me, uh, let me show you here. Uh, the shape is a property, right? Radius is a property. So let's do this one. Here we have a uh, class called shape, okay? Let's actually read in the shape name. Okay, so put it here. And then we have self that uh, radius, okay? And this one equals R, okay? And here we can uh, actually put it here uh, with R, okay? And then here we may have defined the uh, gate area, okay? And we will return uh, actually pi, okay? And pi, I talk about it in your circle class, you can define a class variable. Here you can put, uh, put pi equals 3.14. One uh, five nine two six. Okay, so here you have this uh, class available circle, the pi right times uh, radius times radius. Okay, this one because they are the instance variables, so we need to put uh, self dot radius, self dot radius. Okay, so that's a gate area, and we can have another one. Let's do. Uh, this one called reprint. Okay, so this one will be returned a string format. I'm sorry, here should be a formatting string. So let's do a circle. Okay, so here let's do left, right, bracket, and put a uh, percentage two dot two f over here. And we will actually put a data. That one would be self that radius, something like that. Okay. So we will have a class like this, and then the class name is called circle.py. So go back to the model. Here we do import. Okay. Circle. Okay. So we should do, we can do this one, but I prefer to have from circle, import uh, start. So actually that class can be written over here without any problem. So here we would actually, we because we read it into the X, right? So we will actually look at it. It's an array of two objects. And first object is a, uh, it's actually one, uh, one uh, dictionary. So we will know that the first dictionary will be x of zero. That will be our first dictionary. So the first dictionary's uh, shape value, uh, let me see. Uh, first dictionary is a shape value. So here, let me see. Actually, I should do the following. I should do a circle one will be equals my first, uh, I will create using the circle to create it, right? And then that will be my x0. My x0's uh, shape name would be my x0's, uh, here I put a uh, shape. Okay, and then comma x0. And this one is the second one is called radius. Okay, that's my first element, and I put it into a circle. So this portion, let me actually cut it, okay? Put it over here. So this is my first printing way. Okay. And this one is my second printing way. Okay, and the next one would be my 
object. Okay. So we finish that. We finish the creation of a circle, and then here we print now my circle, circle one. Okay. So we successfully read in the object from the JSON file, and the JSON file is edited from this JSON editor. We download it uh, to our local. So inside here we have a JSON object. We can open it with uh, this uh, the so-called uh, brackets. Okay. And in bracket, we kind of can share this file for both Python and uh, uh, also for for Python and also for JavaScript. Okay, that's good. We actually have this one. So here we finish that, and then we can print out the circle. Let's do this one. Okay. Okay. Let me see. The first one we finish. Let me see the second one. Actually, we C1 equals a circle S0 radius. Uh, there's no shape. Let me check it, okay? There is no shape. Let me check it. Oh, it's capital. I'm sorry. It's capital, so I miss it here. Okay, so it's good. I print out circle three print. Oh, so I read the file from my JSON file, construct a uh, circle uh, object. So let's continue to actually create another uh, one. This one, let's call it uh, rectangle. So similarly, I'm going to copy the whole thing from circle to rectangle. I'm sorry, here I should not have this one. It's not Python, so we are not uh, Java, so we don't do that. Here, I pass my circle to here. So the name, I change it to rectangle. And here, because we don't need to have pi, so I delete the pi portion. So here, I have a shape, and I have the W and H, width and height. So here, I should have width equals W. And then I should have cell that a height will be H. Okay, so get area. This get area, I should have my uh, self that width times a uh, cell that height. Okay, finish that. We do get area. And here I will print out my uh, rectangle and point to F. And then percentage point to F. Okay, this one would be two tuples, so I need to use a tuple. So here I have self dot width and self dot uh, height. Okay, so basically I put that into a rectangle class and I go back to my model. So here, my first object x0 being a red into a circle. So the second one, I should have a rectangle equals a rectangle. And this rectangle should get the data from x1. And the first thing is my shape. That's a dictionary item. And I have the x1. Here, I should have my width. Okay, and then the last one we have S1, and I put my height. Okay, so here actually we do use the format of the JSON format and we in to different uh, data structures. So we successfully will read in these different object or dictionary from a JSON file and put it into uh, the objects. Okay, so here let's print our R1. Okay. Okay, so here let's do wrong disk scenes. Okay, so it actually successfully uh, uh, print now the circle and the uh, uh, rectangle according to here's a reprint. That's a two string function 
uh, equivalent uh, to string function in Python. Okay, so here we read in the data here. So let me keep it here. I mean, can you can read it for a while? Okay, I'll, I'll actually continue uh, later to uh, continue for talking about the object. Okay, so let me keep it here. Okay, you can take a look at it. Okay. Next one, I'm going to show you how to uh, actually show this uh, San Jose State uh, Computer Science uh, annual uh, score. So this one, as I show uh, to different parents, it is the minimum requirement for San Jose State Computer Science Department, okay? So you need to have your GPA times 800 plus your SAT score. This year it rise to this. So if you have a GPA, weighted GPA of 4.2, this only count a semester of the honor course and time 800 plus the USA SAT that's as soon as 1500. And that's as soon as it's 1470. This one will end up to have a score of 4830. So it's just barely past this guy. If you are weighted GPA is this much, SAT is this much, okay? So my point is not to actually uh, do this one. And last time I demonstrated how to read the data from the CSV file to uh, to the Python, okay? Today I'm not going to do the same thing. CSV is good for metric or array, right? You can put things into a metric or array, 2D or 1D data, okay? That's not what we want to do here. Today we are going to put this different scene into JSON format, so it will be easier to create data. So here I create an array, right? And each array I should have, a, I would have a dictionary, right? So I have multiple dictionary. So that's as soon as the first year is 20, uh, actually 2012, okay? And the 2012, I will have a data. So that data, let's look at uh, the uh, this data from my here. It is 14, uh, 4,000. So let me put this one on the side, okay? So I have a dictionary. Each dictionary has the year and score, so 4,000, okay? That's one entry, okay? What's wrong with it? Let me see. Press stream. So here, let's do string. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do the, the other way around. Okay, this one, let's call it year. Okay. And here, let's do 2012. Okay. So that actually would be a better way to do it. Okay. So that actually is one entry. And here, we should have a... Uh, Let's call uh, this data called uh, EI, okay, eligibility index, okay. So this number is 4,000. Okay, so we will have the first dictionary and we will have second one here. Okay, what's wrong with it? Let me see. Best string, how come it's always best string? Now this one, we don't need this one, okay, sorry. The second one, we don't need that, okay? So we would have year, EI, thing. So copy, pass over here, okay? So this one, we have another one. So totally, we would have a nine of them. So here, we have 2013, okay? Let me copy all of them. So copy, past, past. Test, okay. So test. So here I have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, okay. Test. Eighteen. And then I have 2019. And here I have 2020, okay? So 
2020, and I finished up to here. And I'll put a score in. So here I'm going to put a score in. And this is score, put it over here. So 2013, we have 4100, 4100, and then 14. Let me actually minimize this uh, this thing, okay? So I can put two window to look at it. So here, uh, first one and second one, uh, 2014, we have four, five, five, zero. 15, we have 4,300. 16, we have 55, uh, four five five zero. Seventeen we have forty five hundred. Eighteen we have actually forty seven twenty five. And then nineteen we have forty six seventy five. Twenty we have forty eight twenty five. Okay, so that's the data. And we finish that. Okay, and then here I do copy, I put it in this side. It will show you what kind of data they are. So it's, it actually is an array of nine elements, and each element has two data field, year and the eligibility index, okay? Year and the eligibility index. So that's good. And here I have to finish, I actually will actually do save. So save the disk, okay? So save the disk, this one is to SJSU, okay? So save to this one is to SJSU.json, okay? Finish that, let's actually create a new file, Python file, this one is called it SJSU, okay? So we have a uh, so six day uh, Python file. So from the data model here, I import JSON and uh, PP print, okay? And then from my data model, I open the file and read. And this also now copy up to here, maybe. Okay, copy up to here. Put it into my SASU, okay, up to here. So the file I have is called SJSU. SJSU, so says State University Suggestion File. At the very end of my program, I need to do f dot f dot close. Okay, finish that. So I open the file, put it into JSON, and load into X. So I pp print my X, and then actually uh, print out each uh, element in my JSON file. So that one actually is okay. So here, as you can see, you print now this addition, array of dictionary format and also print now each individual data field and key, okay? So this one print now the whole uh, diction, uh, array of dictionaries. Second one will print now this, okay? So that is not a problem. We actually uh, can print these different things out, but here I'm going to actually comment them up, okay? Because that's not the purpose we want to do here. So here I'm going to just come in out because we are going to build the classes for it, okay. So now we finish this one. So I'm going to define a class called uh, EI, okay. So let me actually create a new class called EI, okay. So called EI, eligibility index, okay. So there's an eligibility index class that's called EI class, okay? Here, let's do define, uh, underline, underline, delete, underline, underline, okay? Here, I should have a year, uh, let's do Y, okay? And I should also have a score, okay? Let's call it S, okay? So here, I should have self that uh, year equals Y, okay? I should have self that uh, EI will equal the score, okay? And here I would have define 
and underline, underline R E P R underline underline okay and do cell that one is a print now and I will return uh, just the year and actually uh, format so here I'll say uh, parentheses uh, Y E A R equals percentage P okay comma uh, E I okay, equals percentage P okay and parentheses and here I do percentage mark for formatted stream and here I put cell that year comma cell that uh, EI okay so I assign the two scenes into here and I print it out so this one is my uh, eligibility index class so go back to here I would actually also import my EI module okay so actually I'll do from EI import everything put into here right so here I would actually get a whole array from this uh, X structure so I'm going to actually build uh, each one so here second one I'm going to build each each uh, here I should have each entry okay so let's call it each entry so each entry we will have uh, say here I should have uh, I get an entry right I get an entry so each entry I should have a certain uh, year right let's call uh, uh, e uh, for EI object right equals uh, my EI class and now say my entries uh, entry is an array so each entries uh, year okay will be put into my first entry and each entries uh, a score uh, I will say uh, it, it should be called uh, EI okay it's EI so I have E and EI in my in my uh, JSON file so I'll put them into my into there and then after that I print out each of the eligibility index element E okay so that actually run it okay yeah so it give you such a things uh, actually it's an object of this okay so here let's do this one here we may have uh, something called e list okay so e list equals empty and then we print out the object and we also do e list okay but append my e each object we actually uh, put it into there then here i do print my e list okay now become a list of objects so here i don't do it anymore okay so it become a list of my object each object has the year and actually also have a uh, eligibility okay so that one is a simple printing and then after that I would actually do the following I would have the year list okay and I would also have my eligibility list okay both of them are actually empty and then here for each entry uh, in my e list okay for each entry in my e list each one of these will be a uh, object e okay object e object e so i should have the e and then the object will have data field so i would actually do what my year year list will be appending what my e dot uh, year okay into it my e i list will append my e dot uh, uh, e i index score okay and I finish putting the year and my uh, uh, eligibility index into there so after that I'm going to 
actually close my file, not a problem. The data read in is finished. And then I do figure, okay? Doing figure and at the end we do FIGUI. So figure actually right here, I need to actually do import my pilot, okay? So here I should say from pilot and then I will import everything, okay? And I have a figure and I'm going to show my figure, okay? So this one up here, I will say plot my Y list versus my EI list, okay? And let's just show it, okay? This is a pim simple plot. Hey, where is it? Oh, it has no attribute or EI. Let me check it, okay? Hmm, I made a mistake. So I'll go back to my uh, EI. Oh, it's lowercase EI, I'm sorry. So it's not capital case. So go back to my synopsis so state here. I would actually get my EI uh, uh, data field. Save all, let me actually run it again. Yeah, so this one actually we get this kind of the curve, linear curve, okay? So how about we do bar chart, my Y list versus my EI list, okay? Yeah, so I have two figure, one is the bar chart, one is my, uh, one is my bar chart, one is actually my uh, data. Okay, uh, one is my line. So how about this, I come in out the plot. Okay, let me come in out the plot. And just keep the bar chart. Okay, so here I have the uh, year and my score showing up, but it's not perfect. It's not uh, as good as what I have in my uh, in my Excel here, okay? We are going to tune it to learn how to do a data visualization, okay? But actually, this is the first chart we have, uh, okay, up to here. Uh, so, Julia, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so up to yeah. here, we have this. First thing, let's put the title into there, okay? We actually title over here, right? Last time we I show you a, a few a week, uh, many weeks ago, we show you, you can have the access title, char title. So let's actually do the first title uh, in here. So that's before we do anything, let's do title, okay? And the word is, so let's say, uh, state computer science, okay? So let's do this one. Send or say stay computer science. Let's do a backslash n, okay? And then here say mini mom EI, okay? So let's do this one. Okay, the, I don't put in the, uh, these, uh, what? The, the equation anymore. Okay, I just do this one. Let's try. Okay. Yeah, so you got a minimum index. So right here, let's type it GPA times 800 plus SAT. Okay, that's that. Okay, so we got the title done. Okay, so that title, we actually been able to print out the title. Okay, that's not a problem. So the bar chart, we finished the title, okay? As for different chart type, we will study, okay? So now we finished that portion, so let's look at the Python uh, data visualization, okay? So here this one, we are going to study the Matplotlib plus NumPy and equal PyLab. So here, I just import the whole PyLab, import star to uh, get a simple start.
So we can print simple white plot, sinusoidal function, figure style design, finding a root or whatever, okay? And let's do it one by one, okay? So first thing that uh, actually Python has different libraries, NumPy, SciPy, MapraLab, and PyLab. PyLab actually include everything here you talk, we talk about. Okay, so it actually provide the MATLAB-like interface. And some people don't like PyLab, PyLab, okay? But for me, it actually is quite simple. So I usually just use this one. And this one actually including these three, okay? So you need to install NumPy, SciPy, and also MapraLite in order to be able to run PyLab. Okay, so some of the features are in NumPy, some of the features are in MapraLite. But PyLab all have them, okay? So, but, but it's simple. Sometimes you create trouble, for, but for us, it's actually good enough. Okay, so let's do look at the introduction. Introduction is MapraLab is an excellent 2D, 3D graphic library, okay? So you can create different high quality PNG, PDF, SVR, EPS files, okay? So PyLab is a module in MapraLite, okay? So actually, so there are some, uh, some library uh, menu you can study, okay? So here we don't actually uh, go into the detail about how it can be done. So here you can import PyLab or you can import Py mapralite.pypyplot as plt or also import, import the numpy as numpy. So first way or second way both are okay, okay? And I prefer just use this one, okay? But some people prefer the second one because they can control the, the mapralite and numpy separately. And me, I have to merge everything into a namespace. So sometimes the namespace may have confused. So PyLab may have that trouble, but we are okay for the time being, okay? So the import portion we have done. So from PyLab, we can import star and then plus one, two, three, it will be a simple white chart. Uh, this one pretty simple, so I'm not going to uh, explain it, okay? It's quite simple. So for me, I'm going to actually find a library. So I'll open and go to my library. Uh, here, Python class, okay? And actually here, I'm going to look at the, which one, let me see. It is this one, this one, no, uh, uh, OOP, high def. So here, let me see, it's not in here. Okay, let me see. Or is actually, let me see, doing math for Python. Let me see, is that here? Graphic. Uh, maybe it's this one. Let me see. Okay. So the file name is called it's called simple list Python. Okay. Is there a simple list Python? No, this is one is not. So not in here. Data visualization. Basic, yeah, it's over here, okay. We have this one called simple list. So I'm going to actually import this data visualization in the new window, okay. And here we have, in the basic, we have this one called simple list, okay. It's simple list that we can run, okay. So this one is called simple list. No, not this one. Let me call it again. Okay. Okay. Open this one. And then let me run this one. Simple list. Yeah. So this is a simple list. Okay, anyway, that is this chart called simple list. Okay, let's continue. Now you can print out this simple list. 
And then plot function, plot function is actually your line plot in Excel. Okay, we introduce a line plot. So plot function, you basically put two list. So you plot and put your X list here and your Y list here. So if you don't have X list, you are assumed to have a one, two, three, four versus Y. Okay, so that actually when you don't have X. And here this is a simple list, we don't have the X, so we are plotting in that way, okay? And then we automatically generate a vector, okay, I'm sorry, starting with zero, so it will be zero, one, two, three. And you plot X and Y. If you don't have X, you will print out zero, one, two, three versus Y, okay? And you do need to do show. So here you plot it and show, and it will show the uh, picture for you, okay? So that's the first one we have, okay? And after that, you can save to a disk, okay? What's that? After you make the plot, so let's run this one again. We run this simple list. And here, you can do uh, zoom in, okay? You can zoom in, you can zoom in, okay? And you can also save a picture to a file and you can save a PNG file, JPEG file, whatever file, okay? I'm not going to save it, but this is a feature that you can use to save the file into a certain disk, okay? So that one is that. And the next one, let's look at the sinusoidal function. So how to draw a sine function. So here, we can have uh, data and plus cosine and plus sine. So we get a data, okay? and we can show it. So this one is just wrong it again. This one is not super hard. So let's look at the, let's see, what's that? Sine the py. Okay, let's look at the sine the py. And let's run it, okay? This is pretty simple, so uh, I just print it, okay? The two sine wave, we actually print out two sinusoidal sine wave. And here we had a function, the MATLAB line, okay? So I'm going to skip that one. New one, this one we have, we would like to create X label and Y label, okay? And the title, so let's create X label and Y label. Let me actually go back to our uh, JSON file. Here we bring the bar chart for my Synose index. So here I'm going to put X label, okay? And this label would be what? This label would be E, okay? And I'm going to put, uh, put Y label. Okay, Y label would be my e eligibility index, okay? Y label. Okay? All right, Julia, are you okay up to here? So let's try this one. It's not super hard. So uh, we are just trying to read the, the slides and add more feature into our plot. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So here we have a year over here and a stability index over here. I'm trying to actually create this one just like here. Maybe prettier than this one, okay? I'm trying to do that, okay? So we finish that, okay? And that is my putting into my X label and Y label to there, okay? So that's my sinusoidal function. Again, here, I don't actually uh, read that too uh, careful because that's not what we are trying to present today, okay? So sine wave, and we can use a linear space to create the uh, X points, okay? This one actually is from minimum to maximum and create 100 points of the data. So here X will be a list. And then from minimum to maximum, totally 100 points. And use that to create Y, fill that into sine function, create Y, and then you print out the sinusoid sine function, okay? So that's a sine two, okay? Let's say XY plot. Okay, next one is the figure style. So we are going to put the grid on or off, okay? And we actually, you can turn the grid on or off. 
and you can set the grid with the color lifestyle and line width. Okay. So here we have AXH line, the axis line, and we can have Y axis line. So let's look at this one. I want the grid. Okay. I really want the grid. So let's do this one. The line width is 0.5, label blue. Okay. And then lifestyle dash is a solid line. Okay. So let's do this one. I want to add the grid into my uh, uh, my my chart here. Okay, so let me do my grid. Okay, so let grid first one. I want to have a style. Okay, so let's do style equals let's do a colon style. Okay, so let's look at the one we show in here. Let me actually close this one. The style is dash and a uh, lifestyle. Okay, it's lifestyle. It's not called style. So it's called lifestyle. Okay, so lifestyle equals a colon. And then what's what else? Lifestyle. Lifestyle called uh, dash and then line with coin fly. So let me copy this whole thing over, okay? That will be easier. Okay, anyway, so let's do this one. Okay, so I got this different line for my grid, okay? Uh, we will modify it later, okay? So here, let me see, if the blue is actually too strong, let's do gray, okay? Let's do light gray, please. <coughs> A little bit better, okay? A little bit better. And that actually gives us some sort of read. So we know where the score is, okay? So that one, okay, let's actually close this. This give you give us grid. And we can do X axis vertical line and horizontal line and uh, the vertical line. We don't need that here because this one A X H line and V line is used when you need to adjust your coordinate. So your coordinate, if you want to print it in here and your chart is something like this, you need to assign your AXH line and your uh, V line. For us, we don't need that because our chart is a bar chart. Our chart is a bar chart. So the XY actually already on the boundary. So we actually don't need to move that and show the lifestyle. We don't need that. Okay. We actually don't need that. Okay, next one, programmable parameter list. Let's see here, we have different parameter we can choose for, for the uh, parameter. So here, I'm going to just uh, bypass it for a while. So now I'm going to look at the finding polynomial uh, for optimization. So here, lifestyle, we have it, label, we have it, Let's look at X limits and uh, Y limits, okay? These two are important to us. So that's X limit, we don't need it, but let's do Y limit, okay? Y limits actually make some sense. So let's copy this one and then put, put it back to my uh, chart here. So let me actually put my Y limit, okay? So Y, y limit actually Minimum of the Y starting from say 3800, maximum let's do 5000 because that would give us a better uh, region. Okay, instead of instead of uh, starting from zero, we starting from 3800, that give us a better chart. Okay, showing the trend better than the previous one. Okay, so if we don't have this one, if we don't have this Y limit one, so Y limit show you the boundary, how the chart, it actually, well, 
don't show the trend well. Okay, so this wire limit actually uh, help us a lot. In showing the data for the chart, okay. So that's the Y limit. So then, actually, uh, let's read it more carefully. So this one, actually, we finish this uh, X limit, Y limit label, and type uh, those things. Okay. Then next one, uh, let me see. We can find the root from this function. Uh, this one. No. Interactive more, okay. Uh, this one is not related to our scene here. So the next thing I would like to do is the ticker, okay. Uh, the ticker. Let me see which one is the protein here. I have the uh, legend, okay. Title, polar, legend. Uh, I'm trying to set the ticker, okay? Okay, let me try different things. Let me try on the internet, okay? So, tick formatted, okay? So, ticker, make product live ticker formatted, okay? So, let's look at this one. We actually will have plot uh, range 10. Let me see the ticker setting. Mm, we should get the axis and set major locator. Okay, let me see. Uh, let me see what is the ticker setting of the ticker. Ticker for meta. Okay, let me see. Oh, this is too much. Okay, let me see. So let me try a different one. Okay. So do pilot uh, ticker example. Okay. Here are a few examples. Let me see. Here we have ticker position white light. Okay. Let me try different way. Okay, this one actually too complicated. So set set ticker set Y ticker label. Okay. Let me see. This one is way too complicated. Let me put in some other file to look at it. Okay. Mm, Subplot. So here let's do. Uh, we have plot axis. Okay, here we have plot X tick. So we have axis here, right? We have axis here, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, okay? So we have plot axis, and then we do ticker, we don't have ticker, plot axis ticker. So let's do this one, let's see what that this means, okay? So axis, it show you the axis location, okay? And then check this one actually doesn't tell as much. So let's try this one. Uh, this one is not what I want. I think this one, let me see, try this one. Okay, this is different type of the ticker, ticker way, okay? It's different type of ticker. 
So let's see. We get a current axis, okay, to AX, okay. And after that, we actually should take this one. So we will actually get axis and set minor locator, okay. So let's try this one, okay. Let's try this one. Go back to my chart over here. So here I'm going to get my axis. So here let's do uh, after the figure. I do my axis is equals get uh, CA. Okay, HCA function. I get my axis, and then after I get my axis, I should actually run. This one set minor location y set minor location x axis okay this one uh, this one let me copy this one okay and put it uh up to the grid okay so here instead of point one let me actually do uh, actually do one okay do one two solid one so actually just do one. So here I don't have PLT, I don't have that, so I do multiple locator because I merged the uh, namespace already. Uh, let me see, actually it doesn't help me on the ticker, okay. So here the year, I have the year list. Let me see, I need to actually get the ticker done. Mm, let me see, okay. Uh, let me see. Here, let me see, actually, it's uh, pilot set x uh, labels. So here, that's two set as uh, picks. Okay, x ticks. So here, x ticks. Okay, let's try this one. X ticks. 0 to 1, step size 0.2. Okay, let's try this one. So don't do this one, try this one, okay? So X takes from, actually from 2012 to 2020, step size uh, actually 1. Okay, that will set my ticks. Okay. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh, it's only up to two thousand. Let me see. Actually, so here that's two twenty one. Okay, ending at the twenty one. Yeah, so that I get every year ticker over here. Okay. So that is a setting of my each ticker to there. Okay, so that one is done. So that portion I uh, set up the ticker for my chart. Okay, so originally I every other year I have it. Okay, now I actually have every year I have a tick. For every year I have a tick now. So now the next one, let's look at the, how to put the data label over there on top of it. Data label is the one I show you over here, okay? So let's do next one, the data label. Let's look at how to put the data label to there. So finish the tip, let's try, 
some data label, okay. Uh, here we have a plot, okay. This one I need to plot the data label. So that put it here, let's try highlight uh, data label. So data label, P plot data label, okay. Add label and text to the plot, okay. So here, add text to plot, a label to line plot, to bar plot, okay. So here we would have uh, from something, zip something, we have bar chart with the X scale, okay. So bar chart actually, bar chart is actually this uh, would be your year list. And uh, this one is your uh, EI list, right? So we do need to put our year list to here, uh, the, the AEI list to here, and then show this part, okay? And we actually adjust the ticker. So ticker portion, not as soon as that we don't need that. So here pretty much we will need this portion, okay, need this portion. So let's copy this guy into there, right, and put the label. So we will need this one. Okay, so let's actually copy this portion. Okay, copy this portion and go back to my chart. Okay, to my chart over here. Let me actually do a post, okay. And it is a little bit too complicated. So the label, hmm, here should be my year list. This one should be my EI list, okay? The label I think should be, uh, should be 4D, okay? Uh, format Y, format Y, Y would be my, uh, actually, the label, and okay, Y is okay. So text coordinate, S Y distance from each point. Mm, distance from text point S Y. So we got some X and we got some Y. And distance from the X and Y. So the Y portion. That's actually just set to be. A little bit up, so five, please. So let's try this one. If that's uh, okay, okay. So plot this one first. Yeah. So that's about good one. Hi. So. So Julia, is that okay? Is that okay? So we get the y this and x ei this to zip together and form in each x and y value. So each each time we get a value from here and a value from ei, form in the x and y, okay? And then this y we form it to a four digit format. And then we create a label and each label we put place into the s1 location, which s1 location? we set it to be offset from my XY location by five upper. So here, if I say 20, it will be a little bit higher, way higher than uh, its current location. Is it too high? So five, I think it's a good location. Okay? Is um, in, in zip just like? In zip, this zip is a function, right? Yeah, does it? Oh. So, so what happened for this zip will be, uh, my data has two things, year and EI, right? So 2012, and uh, this one is actually uh, 4,000, right? So you will create something like this, S and Y. Here will be 2012, comma, 4,000. It will be something like this, and then comma, 2013. Uh, 4,300, something like that. 
So zipping is zipping two list into. So basically, you have two list. This uh, year list should be 2012, 2013, 2014, right? Da, 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 da. And this uh, eligibility index is 40, 4,000, 4,300 something. If two will be zipped together, become a 2012, uh, 4,000, and then 2013, uh, 4,300, and comma, something like that. You know what I'm saying? If it's like that, and each one of them will be assigned a value to x, y, so x will get your 2012, y will get your 4,000. Is that okay? Yeah. And using that, you will, we create a new label. What label? The label would be based on your Y value. So that would be your uh, eligibility index value. We don't care about X. So here, for example, if I actually want to do here, I can actually do a format. Let's put uh, one, and I can do uh, zero comma, uh, uh, actually, to 14. I'm sorry, actually, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And I can put my S and Y into there. Let's see how the label change, okay? Oh, that's not, okay. So let me do this one. It's a Python standard uh, string format. And here I do cache, okay? Yeah, you see it's a year dash score. Is that okay? Year dash score, is that okay? Yeah. But that's too complicated, we don't need that. We just do, so, so zero is the first number, one is the, uh, second number, and we don't need that. Actually, not too complicated. I just need a uh, eligibility index, okay? And that's good enough, okay? And look like this green is too annoying, okay? So I'm going to turn the green off. Green is a little bit too annoying, okay? Okay, so today I briefly go through the construction of a classes, objects, and I actually create those data from where? From my, uh, from my JSON editor, right? From my JSON editor. So, so why, why I want to use a JSON editor and instead of using my Excel file? Why? So basically, both my JSON editors, uh, JSON file, all the from my uh, Excel, I can both generate data file, right? It's both a text file, and then both can be read into Python, right? And Python put them into objects, right? And from object, I actually print out the chart, right? Is that okay? So why this time I picked a uh, JSON instead of uh, CSV? So I show you CSV before, right? And how comes the time I prefer JSON? I, I, uh, Julia, why this time I prefer JSON? Uh, because this guy is linear structure, it had to be like matrix type, right? This uh, type can be nonlinear. Nonlinear means here I may have an array, and then yeah. five data, and then under three third data you may have another array. You know what I'm saying? So the data is no longer two D. It can be a nonlinear. So maybe tree structure, and under here another tree structure. You know what I'm saying? In that case, object is better than the CSV metric type, okay? And I can use uh, this one, actually, I can use this one in JSON editor. I can also use my uh, Notepad++ to edit it. And why I use a JSON editor? 
because JSON editor has the syntax checker, right? If I if I put a extra comma, it will come red. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. When there are too many data, actually, this one is a better editor compared to my Notepad Double Plus. My Notepad Double Plus doesn't tell me I make some mistake. Oh, I missed this one. Well, it will show me, right? You know what I'm saying? So I would rather key in my data using my JSON editor instead of using this one. This one actually is nonlinear. It's actually linear data. So the data had to be tabulized like this, right? You know what I'm saying? It had to be 1D or 2D array, right? Yeah. And here you have no limitation. It can be any dictionary or any nonlinear structure. You can key the data and do it into my file, right? Even though this EI and the score and year still be uh, actually, it actually is a 2D data. Actually, it's not really nonlinear. But here I just try to demonstrate that, okay, in case that the data is nonlinear and JSON editor had the advantage. And I do show you second way of reading the data into uh, uh, this one Python. Okay, so we do get two ways to read in data. One is normal 2D, 1D array. You use a CSV file, comma separated the value file, and open the file, read it one by one, okay? Split by the comma. That would be good enough, okay? That one we know. And here, we actually try to read it into it using the JSON file. And this JSON file, if you look at it, the JSON file, you look at it, you can use a notepad double plus to open it. You will get a data of such a format. You know what I'm saying? You will get a data of such a format, OK? But I don't like to use this one, because here, if I put a comma, nobody say that it's wrong, OK? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's okay you actually use this one to edit it, but I prefer to use a JSON editor, you know, and you can save it and you can share. So it's not bad, okay? And this file can also be used in JavaScript. So next time if we have time, I will actually try to use a JavaScript to read in the data. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I try to use it JavaScript to read in the data as well. So it's not only for Python, you can only, it's a code JSON, it's a JavaScript object notation, okay? And here we try to use it using a very simple example of the Synosis Day uh, eligibility index to show you how to make a chart. And this one I think right now is as good as this one, right? As good as this one, and this one is generated by this. Which one is faster? I think still, Excel file is faster. But remember this because this data is 2D array. If it is not 2D array, I will actually have more programmability using my Python. You know what I'm saying? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can we stop over here for today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, next week we start to do review for. Uh, AP exam, okay? Okay. Okay. And I'll still find time to teach you if we have time to do more of this uh, Python stuff, okay? But I think right now AP is more important, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so please go to your uh, course here. Next week we'll start here. There are some online practicing problems you should submit and I will grade it just okay. like AP course, okay? Mm -hmm. And we will discuss the problems over here. And there are some HR products and some Khan Academy uh, video you can watch, okay? So you can do pre uh, review like this. So basically we have two books. One is using the McGraw Hill uh, book. Okay, one is this one, AP Computer Science Principle, this book, right? The other one is actually Barron's. I think two books is good enough for this subject. It's not super hard, okay? And this year, I think I tried too many things on this course. 
And next year, I'll try to change the format. Next year, I probably will teach HTML one course, Python one course, JavaScript one course, and then uh, CSP by itself a course. But this one is way shorter, maybe only 10 weeks would be good enough, something like that, okay? And this year, I put everything together as a big course. I think that actually uh, makes things too complicated and students cannot remember every every single thing, right? I'll try to improve myself. Yeah, it's okay. I would rather actually next year I finish the CSP and I do HTML course here and maybe I do JavaScript for a period and then students focus on the topic. That probably is better. But this year because I'm the, my first year to teach CSP, so I don't know, I actually try my best to use the code out as the main uh, course and then I add JavaScript, add HTML, add Python. But this actually doesn't work out too well. Why? Because I think that students need to cover this, also cover this. It's not really a good way to teach this way, right? This year I'll try, try to break them down into HTML one course, Python one course, and CSP maybe a separate course. I still teach the same thing, but actually the schedule will be different. Uh, I, I learned from uh, this year's experience, okay? Any question? No, then we stop here, okay? I'll send the sample code for you, okay? Okay. Okay, good night then. Thank you.